All right, welcome back to another session where we last left off. Um, we were able to create our game over screen by having this, creating this collider here. And we also learned how to use the collision uh, method to detect if a trigger event happened, uh, which we applied in the loose collider right here, the script. And then we've also fixed the the ball so that it doesn't rotate by freezing the rotation here. Um, and yeah, I guess that's pretty much it from what I remember. So we're gonna learn how to continue um, with the collision. Oh, they didn't go over um, how to pass, um, how to make it better because I know this is kind of like hard coding it a bit. And let's say they're, they're giving an example of like what if, like what if we changed the name of game over to something else, then it wouldn't work again. So then I was thinking maybe we pass in the like if we don't change this at all throughout the whole uh, game, then we can just reference the we can just reference the the index. So let me go to the next one is uh, which will be learning how to move objects with a mouse.
So we're going to learn how to move the paddle with our mouse. And he was just going over how, like, we have to consider the units the, uh, in terms of the position and we've got to be careful when we're moving the paddle out of screen and we get, because we know that the size of, or he mentioned that the size of the paddle is 2 so mm, we have to probably divide that by 1 to find the right place before it hits the end which is half of the width which is 1 so I'm guessing this is well I mean technically we have to consider this too so oh dang it might be a little bit more complicated than mine but anyways uh, he wants us to now make a script called pep then that's So we'll see that it's 105, 168. Uh, well, I wonder what that actually means because I mean, this says 11, and it's only in the middle, it's saying 300 here. I don't know the units of what it's returning, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, because we're going to try to make the paddle assigned to the mouse and we just need to know that we're getting the values and which will update the paddle depending on it Yeah, for him it, it works properly and we have to increase the size oh I see so this is zero oh all right x coordinate y coordinate and then z the z
So I see. I mean, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Because I was, I was kind of getting confused as to why we would need the paddle to be following the mouse everywhere. Um, especially if we're also considering its y-axis. But he just um, I feel like we're going to instead just focus on the x-axis. So now we know we're just going to take this value. And if I move the mouse here, it doesn't really update the y-value. It'll stay as zero hopefully or whatever this value is but then the x it'll at least move within this range right here For him, it's showing like a float value, but for mine, it's like a whole number. I wonder if it makes a difference. Wait, what? Wait, was it? Is it still rotating? Let me see. How did, did it, I thought I prevented it from rotating? I'm not going insane, right? <laughs> is it rotating? Oh, it is moving though, because it was supposed to be here. Oh, that's kind of odd. So screen width returns the pixel of the um, returns the value of how many pixels are in the screen. So I just want to just see how how big it is. I guess um, pixel. All right. Screen pixel. Six hundred ninety six. So now we update the value to match. Uh, not really sure. Maybe you're supposed to increase the size. I think yeah, that might be it. We're gonna have to maximize the play size. But then how are we gonna look at the council? Oh, here it is. So this is one, I guess. And this is zero.
So he's saying that our total width will be 16. And the reason why he knows this is because we set our size to be 12. And, or, well, we set one side to be 6, but in total the size would be 12. And then, um, because of our 4 to 3 aspect ratio, we take the 12 and then we kind of, or, or we consider the 12, and then that's why 16 is the, the width because um, in a 4 by 3 that uh, it would be 16 over 12 and if you reduce it to its minimal form it'd be 4 over 3 or 4 or 4 to 3 aspect ratio We multiply up. He wants us to serialize the value 16 so that we don't hard code anything. Uh, I've kind of forgot what serialize is. I know what serializable field does, but I guess I never really understood what serialize meant. So let's Serialization is the process of converting object state into a format that can be transmitted or stored. The serialization changes the object state into a series of bits. The object state could be reconstructed later in the opposite process called deserialization or unmarshalling. Can we look at some examples? Because to me it looks like we're just creating a variable. Bring a steam into a byte stream taking the byte stream into an actual object. Hmm. I mean I do kind of remember that there is a way to just do serialize serialize and then the variable um, int wait let me see challenge so we need to serialize this essentially so that when we divide by the screen width um, or some variable that holds these two values we can make it a lot simpler so we can do like I guess float um, float uh, I mean we're trying to adjust adjust size I guess adjust size I'm not sure if there's a way we do it but we could do screen dot width with times 16. You take this off and then you just do adjust size. There might be a better name for the blue. I think this is the solution to the mini challenge, but I may be wrong. Oh, serialized field. I got the type right. Can I refactor? Yes. Screen with in units sixteen F. Oh. See, that's what he meant. Oh, I'm 
a script to the paddle, right? So now, um, yeah, paddle. Serializable field, float. Do you make it public? Oh, I spelled it wrong. No, I spelled it right. Serialize field, float, screen width. And then hmm, I wonder why it's not showing. There's an error. It says it expecting parentheses. We got one parentheses. Oh, we even forgot that one. There you go, now it should work. There it is. So by making it serialized like this. Uh, and now I know that when he needs serialized, just make a serialized feel of it, which is, as a reminder, uh, a way to allow us to edit the variable through the inspector, um, which is this. So then 16, we say 16 because that'd be the size of this camera. Oh, that's why we do that. Because let's say if I wanted to change the size of the the camera right then I'd also have to adjust it to the, the new length I wonder if there's a way to just like dynamically do that instead of doing it like this I guess I'll, I'll um, he might mention it later down the the line of the project but yeah that's what I'm currently thinking at the moment Let's look at the values now. So now this should wait, is this right? Oh, alright. But yeah, it should match the the position the or should match the position of the actual um, points in relative to the the camera size. So here we said it was like roughly around 7.6. That was 11. Hmm. Let me try that again. So right now it's negative. Let's make that bigger. So this has to be. Oh wait, no, it's not doing it. Anymore. So this is kind of like zero, I guess. This is so. This 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 still says eight. This is sixteen. I, I wonder why this value isn't showing up properly. It's saying that we're in, in the eighth position. Unless I'm mistaken. Let's put eight. Eight is right there. Huh. I'm thinking because it's, it's because um, we have it set up like this so it's also considered it's relative to here but ours is relative to the the camera or the, the way we adjusted the value which starts over here so I guess that's the difference um, I wonder if there is a way to kind of 
Yeah, I, I do see an issue though, because like his like because it's he made his um, background like perfectly four by three. Um, so his like actually like his bottom left actually like um, is um, on top of the or is actually on the center here. There are these points are lined, but for me, for mine, since my picture's a little bit bigger, um, it actually it had to adjust it so that the camera is where I wanted it to be. So I guess I gotta keep that in mind. It, it's, it's that the value should have been accurate, but it's because of my the the since I adjusted the camera position due to the my preferences of wanting the chalkboard to be in the center. Uh, the values are kind of inaccurate as a, uh, compared to the transform position or the position of the actual object in respect to the point over here. And what, what happened to it? Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong one. Yeah, so, so at least I know now that it's accurate in the point that's relative to the camera point. So because we need to be able to control this paddle as much as we can, I, um, the use of the update it will be needed. Uh, I'm not so sure about the start because we're not really needing to instantiate anything I believe. We just want to be able to move this around in the x-axis. So vector2 is a type. Um, I kind of remember this because I did code, I tried code. I tried coding using the libgdx framework, which is um, fully Java based. And we did have to create an, a vector2 object to kind of give the position for the, the character. So this is kind of familiar to me. But yeah, I think that was it for today and I'll continue tomorrow.